Marcus mentioned last week um, a legal term called double jeopardy. You remember that? Double jeopardy. I learned what double jeopardy was, most of us did, through a movie, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, starring Ashley Judd. Yeah. Yeah. And in, let me explain this movie. It's very unique, and you'll get the picture of the cross in it. Ashley Judd was uh, in the movie. She's starring this character, and she was accused of and convicted of murdering her husband and went and did like 15 years, 20 years, something like that. Come to find out her husband faked the murder. So she done done the time for the murder of her husband, but he faked it. So when she get out, she see that he's alive. She can legally kill him. This is, this is for real. She can legally kill him because she already paid the time and done the time and the fine for that murder. So in the movie, she can legally kill him. Now, in, in Jesus, of course, we forgive. But, but she already went to jail for it. So if she killed him, she can't be charged for the same crime that she already went to jail for. Now, how can we add this to the cross? This is so good. This is so good. Y'all need to get this revelation. It'll change your whole aspect of the gospel. Amen? In Isaiah 53, verse 5, he says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace fell on him, and by his stripes we are healed. Or were in the New Testament, say were in Peter. We are healed, right? God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Amen? The Bible says that he is our healer. All right? This is very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says that for he, him, who, he, he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What does Jesus' stripes represent? Jesus' stripes is wages. It's a payment for my sin. So the whip's and the death that he took, if my sin was a crime, Jesus paid the fine. If my sins have caused me to get sentenced, what was the sentence? Death. The wages of sin is death, right? So if Jesus took upon the death that I deserved, right? If I died and went to hell, God would be unjust, because he can't charge Jesus for, for the same, he can't charge me for the same crime that Jesus paid for. Now, somebody got to pay for sin. Either you let Jesus pay for your sin, or you're going to have to pay. This is why it's very important. God is just. He ain't going to let you get away. If he didn't let Jesus get away, he can't let you get away. This is why you need Jesus. Amen. Now, you don't have to need him if you're willing to pay. If you're willing to pay, you don't need Jesus. But if you want to live in eternal life, you need Jesus to pay for your sin. Because God can't charge you and Jesus for your sin. This is, why, this is why you don't get to go to hell. This is why you can be healed. Sin, sickness and disease is a byproduct of sin. Jesus, and by his stripes, we are healed. It's not right for Jesus to suffer Sickness on the cross on your behalf and you still suffer for it. That's double jeopardy. 
This is why you have a right to be healed. You have a right to be whole. You have a right to be living in a right mind. Why? Because Jesus already suffered. The message is entitled, It's a Package Deal. It's a Package Deal. Amen. Turn your Bibles to... We still don't have the screens working this Sunday, but we'll get them working next Sunday. We have the order part, and it's, it's running behind. So you turn, to, you turn your Bibles to or swipe to Psalms chapter, division 103, verses 1 through 11. I'll be reading from the New King James Bless, uh, Version. Excuse me. 103, verses 1 through 11. And it reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, and who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Thank God for that. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and, grace, and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Far as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your holy written word. We thank you for your power, your strength, your glory, and your might. I thank you for every aspect of who you are. I thank you for, Lord, we want to believe for you today to teach us, Lord God, this aspect of who you are as the healer. Lord God, we thank you, God, we yield to you to reveal to us the mystery of the doctrine of healing and of who you are, Lord God. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us. We yield to you, teacher. Teacher. We yield now. Now. Now, God. In Jesus' name, and we pray. Amen. 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 It's a package deal. It's a package deal. All right. There are, you know, have y'all ever come, came to your house and you have found one of these on your door step, right? And um, sometimes I forget, you know, that I order some stuff, especially when you order stuff all the time, right? And so um, the gospel is a package deal. It's not a singular gift. Amen? It's a package deal. And some of us, we receive the gospel like this. We're like, thank God. Oh, God, I'm saved. I'm saved. Holy Ghost, I'm saved. Amen? But there is more to unpack. Amen? There is a, there is a pursuit. There is a, uh, uh, a mystery about what's inside. Do we ever just receive a package and don't open it? Do we? And so I am going to open this package this morning because sometimes I believe we do our faith like this. We settle with the gift. I'm saved. But we don't discover. We don't go on a pursuit on what is this all about? Is this more? than what I grew up with? Is it more than what our denomination done taught us? Amen? And so I'm going to go through a couple of packages. Now, this is a package that I, I purchased. And with this package, this is uh, uh, some parts. You know, I'm, I'm in lawn care business, so I, I keep parts coming in all the time because something always breaks. Something always need maintenance, right? Um, but this unique package right here was... Uh, it amazed me because it was like $14, right? My whole goal and why I pressed in Amazon Prime, Amazon, was to get a carburetor for my weed eater. But it had additional stuff in it. I was expecting to pay $15 just for the carburetor, right? 
How many of y'all open packages sometimes and you're surprised at what else is in it? You know, ain't that, don't that, ain't that unique? You know, when you find out there's more to the package than you originally anticipated, amen? And so in this package, I have a carburetor. But also you see, this is the carburetor. I'm sorry, I can't get this open. But you have a filter and you have other pieces back here. And then all of it is included to help me maintain my weed eater. This is one. And it surprised me that it was $15 and all this other stuff was in it. Now, I remember what everybody should recognize what this is, right? It's a box for a phone. All right. In this phone, in this box, it's a, it, it, phones, how many of y'all remember when phones used to come with, uh, they don't come with them no more, but they used to come with headphones. You remember? Wasn't that just an additional plus? You know, I'm like, man. But this phone came with headphones and a phone protector. And I was so surprised. And my point is, there is more to the gospel than just salvation. How many of y'all, how many of y'all use uh, Amazon? Amazon. How many of y'all got Amazon Prime? You got Amazon Prime, right? And... What's so powerful about Amazon? I, I believe it's worth it, right? How I many you, you you wouldn't buy it if it wasn't worth it, right? You get free shipping, but that's not the only thing you get, right? You get videos, you get to watch movies. I mean, and then go over to Prime and see everything else. I go in, um, I go in um, Whole Foods, right? And you got a you got a discount if you got a Prime membership, you get a discount at the cashier at, at register. It is so I think it's so wonderful that I got more to my membership than I even know of, right? There's a whole lot more that I don't even know about. I go to Prime and Amazon, it's a lot more items that comes with Amazon Prime that I don't even use, right? Some of us, but guess what you have to do? You have to discover. You have to dig. So there's more to your salvation. There's more to the cross. There is more in the package of salvation than just you going to heaven. Amen. Amen. And one extra piece or one just icing on the top is the doctrine of healing. Y'all want to dive into this this morning? In the beginning, in Genesis 1 and 31, the Bible says God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, there was morning, and on the sixth day. He saw that everything he made was good. So before the fall, God created everything good. And it was, the Bible says it was very good. Say very good. And I must say that everything isn't very good today, right? How many, how many of you can attest that everything you see on TV and everything that's happening in the world isn't very good, right? So something happened, amen, that, that caused um, everything that was very good to get out of kilter where we have suffering, we have pain, we have things that's going on in this life. How did that happen? Well, God had gave Adam and Eve instructions, and he said, Though, if you eat of the fruit of the uh, garden, of the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil, he said, you shall surely die. The death that God was talking about mean, meaning separation from God. This death or this sin that Adam and Eve committed, was it adultery? Was it murder? Was it backstabbing? Was it cheating on your wife? Was it cheating on your husband? Amen. Was it gossip? Disobedience. It was disobedience. It was something that seemed to be simple. I would say it's something like what many people excuse today. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And you really think about it from a fleshly point of view. You're like, man, it really wasn't that bad, you know? But that's the problem with sin. The enemy wants you to keep dabbling in it so he can keep a separation between you and God. Amen? He wants to keep access to you. Sickness is not from God. 
Sickness is a wage of sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Sickness is a byproduct of Adam and Eve's sin. Amen. And so how do you begin to gain a perspective where you want to stop sinning against God? Where there's an unction on the inside of you where you got to, you want to be led to stop sinning against God. Amen. And, I'm, and, and I had somebody tell me this. You just sin differently than I do. And that is the truth. When I'm telling them not to repent, because you can go out in the streets and you're like, repent, man. Your sin ain't different from mine. I was like, that is the truth. But I am endeavoring not to keep reproducing the same old mistakes over and over and over and over and over again. Amen? Because that puts you on the devil's turf. And you need God to help you to stop sinning. Amen? One of the things that helped me to stop sinning and reproducing and just repetitively sinning and living in the world is purpose. There was a doctor who formulated a, um, a, um, a, a trial with these rats. And so he put them in a rat cage, and he had two waters that he would give them. One had heroin in it, and one had regular water in it. 100% of the time, they'll start drinking the heroin water. 100% of the time, 100% of the time, 100% of the time. 100% of the time because of the type of cage they was in. Then he took, those, took some more rats and made this cage rat paradise, right? They had the spinners, they had cheese, they had more food that they could have, they had, you know, you know make, they'd be able to make families, amen? Making babies. <laughs> and they was around family. They was around other rats. They was in a community of rats. And the same doctor put the heroin water over here in the corner Amen. and the regular water over here in the corner, yes. and none of them got hooked on the heroin. That's right. That's right. They ran to the water without heroin because mm -hmm. they was in an environment full of purpose. Mm -hmm. They was in environment. They was in the environment affect your decision making. A fish outside of water is struggling, Amen. but a fish in water is a genius, Amen. right? Amen. There, it don't even seem like some fish be struggling as they in the water, right? Because they was created to do what they was created to do. Amen. And one problem with people who keep sinning, they not in an environment where they are fulfilling purpose. The high of fulfilling purpose is greater than any addiction. Doing what you've been created to do is greater than any addiction. Amen? So here at Restoration Church, the testimony of Restoration Church is our uh, mission statement, a place of new beginnings and hope for the future. Many times people come to Restoration Church, what they experience. When they come, they experience rest. They experience healing. Many testimonies over and over again. I've heard it many times. I've come to Restoration Church, and I can tell you I've been restored. I am resting. I am healing. Amen? And so one of the things I love about our church is we, the Lord fulfills our mission. He fulfills it. I have many, many of us came from other churches to come to Restoration Church. Many of us worked our heads off at other churches. Amen? And then come to Restoration Church, and you ain't got to sit back and do nothing. Just chill. Just be restored. Amen? Amen. Until you heal. Right? What's the definition of divine healing? And what I want to get into today. To, be, to experience healing means to be restored back to the original intent of purpose. So that if you need healing in your body, amen, bodily healing, organs, tissues, many times we need healing because it's functioning outside of its intended purpose. There is a dis-ease, amen, and the Lord wants to restore its original function, and that is healing. Divine healing is when you trust in God to do it. And a lot of times this is not instant. 
Sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. That's why I believe in recovery. Recovery is another definition of healing. The Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Sometimes we see it instantly. Sometimes we don't. But we still believe. Okay. What does Jesus, he actually heals? Well, he heals our body, heals our organs. He heals our mental capacities. Amen. Mental illness. Is it, not a, is, it, it, it isn't a permanent diagnosis for you as long as you're serving Jesus. Amen. Amen. Emotional health. Some of us are damaged emotionally. That isn't a permanent condition as long as Jesus is your Lord. Amen. Now, the thing about Jesus being your Lord, uh, a lot of times he wants you to believe. He wants you to accept the fact and accept his ministry towards you. Amen. Because many things that God does for us is based off our uh, our permission, our our consent. And we've been taught in the days of old that if God want me healed, well, he would just do it. Well, if that was the case, he wouldn't tell us to believe. He told he commanded over and over again, only believe. Why would he say that? If he was just going to do it. Amen. Amen. God want to he-, he wants to heal relationships. He wants to heal all relationships that are torn. Amen. Marriages, children, father, mother with their children, husbands and wives. He wants to heal. Marcus mentioned last week. Um, a legal term called double jeopardy. You remember that? Double jeopardy. I learned what double jeopardy was, most of us did, through a movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, starring Ashley Judd. Yeah. Yeah. And in, let me explain this movie. It's very unique. And you'll get the picture of the cross in it. Ashley Judd was uh, in the movie. She's starring this character. And she was accused of and convicted of murdering her husband. And went and did like 15 years, 20 years, something like that. Come to find out her husband faked the murder. So she done done the time for the murder of her husband, but he faked it. So when she get out, she see that he's alive. (laughs) She can legally kill him. This This is for real. She can legally kill him. Because she already paid the time and done the time and the fine for that murder. So in the movie, she can legally kill him. Now, in in Jesus, of course, we forgive. But, But she already went to jail for it. So if she killed him, she can't be charged for the same crime that she already went to jail for. Now, how can we add this to the cross? This is so good. This is so good. Y'all need to get this revelation. It'll change your whole aspect of the gospel. Amen. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, he says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace fell on him, and by his stripes we are healed. Or were in the New Testament, say were in Peter. We are healed, right? God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Amen? The Bible says that he is our healer. All right? This is very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says that for he him who he he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What does Jesus stripes represent? Jesus stripes is wages. It's a payment for my sin. So the whips. And the death that he took, if my sin was a crime, Jesus paid the fine. If my sins, 
have caused me to get sentenced. What was the sentence? Death. The wages of sin is death, right? So if Jesus took upon the death that I deserve, right? If I died and went to hell, God would be unjust. Because he can't charge Jesus for, for the same, he can't charge me for the same crime that Jesus paid for. Now, somebody got to pay for sin. Either you let Jesus pay for your sin, or you're going to have to pay. This is why it's very important. God is just. He ain't going to let you get away. If he didn't let Jesus get away, he can't let you get away. This is why you need Jesus. Now, you don't have to need him if you're willing to pay. If you're willing to pay, you don't need Jesus. But if you want to live in eternal life, you need Jesus to pay for your sin. Because God can't charge you and Jesus for your sin. This is why, this is why you don't get to go to hell. This is why you can be healed. Sin, sickness and disease is a byproduct of sin. Jesus, and by his stripes, we are healed. It's not right for Jesus to suffer sickness on the cross on your behalf, and you still suffer for it. That's double jeopardy. This is why you have a right to be healed. You have a right to be whole. You have a right to live in your right mind. Why? Because Jesus already suffered. Why does God heal? Why? Marcus mentioned last week um, a legal term called double jeopardy. You remember that? Double jeopardy. I learned what double jeopardy was, most of us did, through a movie. Right? Uh, starring Ashley Judd. And in, let me explain this movie. It's very unique, and you'll get the picture of the cross in it. Ashley Judd was uh, in the movie. She's starring this character, and she was accused of and convicted of murdering her husband and went and did, like, 15 years, 20 years, something like that. Come to find out her husband faked the murder. So she done done the time for the murder of her husband, but he faked it. So when she get out, she see that he's alive. <laughs> she can legally kill him. This is, this is for real. She can legally kill him because she already paid the time and done the time and the fine for that murder. So in the movie, she can legally kill him. Now, in, in Jesus, of course, we forgive. But... <laughs> But she already went to jail for it. So if she killed them, she can't be charged for the same crime that she already went to jail for. Now, how can we add this to the cross? This is so good. This is so good. Y'all need to get this revelation. It'll change a whole aspect of the gospel. Amen. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, he says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace fell on him, and by his stripes we are healed. Or were in the New Testament, say were in Peter. We are healed, right? God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Amen? The Bible says that he is our healer. All right? This is very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says that for he, him, who, he, he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might become the righteous of God in him. What does Jesus' stripes represent? Jesus' stripes is wages. It's a payment 
for my sin. So the whips and the death that he took, if my sin was a crime, Jesus paid the fine. If my sins have caused me to get sentenced, what was the sentence? Death. The wages of sin is death, right? So if Jesus took upon the death that I deserve, right? If I died and went to hell, God would be unjust. Because he can't charge Jesus for, for the same, he can't charge me for the same crime that Jesus paid for. Now somebody got to pay for sin. Either you let Jesus pay for your sin, or you're going to have to pay. This is why it's very important. God is just. He ain't going to let you get away. If he didn't let Jesus get away, he can't let you get away. This is why you need Jesus. Now, you don't have to need him if you're willing to pay. If you're willing to pay, you don't need Jesus. But if you want to live in eternal life, you need Jesus to pay for your sin. Because God can't charge you and Jesus for your sin. This is why, this is why you don't get to go to hell. This is why you can be healed. Sin, sickness and disease is a byproduct of sin. Jesus, and by his stripes, we are healed. It's not right for Jesus to suffer sickness on the cross on your behalf and you still suffer for it. That's double jeopardy. This is why you have a right to be healed. You have a right to be whole. You have a right to live in your right mind. Why? Because Jesus already suffered. Marcus mentioned last week um, a legal term called double jeopardy. You remember that? Double jeopardy. I learned what double jeopardy was, most of us did, through a movie. Right? Uh, starring Ashley Judd. And in, let me explain this movie. It's very unique. And you'll get the picture of the cross in it. Ashley Judd was uh, in the movie, she's starring this character, and she was accused of and convicted of murdering her husband. And went and did like 15 years, 20 years, something like that. Come to find out her husband faked the murder. So she done done the time for the murder of her husband, but he faked it. So when she get out, she see that he's alive. She can legally kill him. This is, this is for real. She can legally kill him because she already paid the time and done the time and the fine for that murder. So in the movie, she can legally kill him. Now, in, in Jesus, of course, we forgive. But, but she already went to jail for it. So if she killed him, she can't be charged for the same crime that she already went to jail for. Now, how can we add this to the cross? This is so good. This is so good. Y'all need to get this revelation. It'll change your whole aspect of the gospel. Amen? In Isaiah 53, verse 5, he says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace fell on him, and by his stripes we are healed. Or were in the New Testament, say were in Peter. We are healed, right? God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Amen? The Bible says that he is our healer. All right? This is very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says that for he, him, who, he, he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteous of God in him. What does Jesus' stripes represent? 
Jesus stripes is wages. It's a payment for my sin. So the whips and the death that he took, if my sin was a crime, Jesus paid the fine. If my sins have caused me to get sentenced, what was the sentence? Death. The wages of sin is death, right? So if Jesus took upon the death that I deserve, right? If I died and went to hell, God would be unjust. Because he can't charge Jesus for, for the same, he can't charge me for the same crime that Jesus paid for. Now, somebody got to pay for sin. Either you let Jesus pay for your sin, or you're going to have to pay. This is why it's very important. God is just. He ain't going to let you get away. If he didn't let Jesus get away, he can't let you get away. This is why you need Jesus. Now, you don't have to need him if you're willing to pay. If you're willing to pay, you don't need Jesus. But if you want to live in eternal life, you need Jesus to pay for your sin. Because God can't charge you and Jesus for your sin. This is why, this is why you don't get to go to hell. This is why you can be healed. Sin, sickness and disease is a byproduct of sin. Jesus, and by his stripes, we are healed. It's not right for Jesus to suffer sickness on the cross on your behalf, and you still suffer for it. That's double jeopardy. This is why you have a right to be healed. You have a right to be whole. You have a right to live in your right mind. Why? Because Jesus already suffered. Listen, healing is just important, just as guaranteed a part of your salvation as eternal salvation. This is how we, we don't believe the same way about salvation as we do healing, though, but it's the same. It's just as promised to you as Salvation. When you're praying for somebody to be saved, especially as ministers, we don't pray, you know, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I hope you save them. Lord God, please, if it's, if it's your will to save them, Lord, if it's your will to save them, Lord, save them. Why does that sound wrong? Because it is his will. It's not an if then why do we pray like that concerning healing? Lord, if it's your will to heal them, heal them. When you, did you stop believing you were saved? How many of y'all got saved, right? But did you stop sinning right after you got saved? Huh, did you stop sinning? No. No. But did you stop believing that you were saved? I continue to believe I was saved. Why? Because it was given to me by faith. It was given to me as a gift. I continue to press in my relationship with the Lord despite my sin. So why do we stop believing in healing? Because the sickness is still there. <coughs> Come on, saints. Come on. Why? Because we don't believe it strongly. No, we have more word to validate why we are getting saved, right? We got more word for it. Because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your sickness don't belong to you if he suffered it already. The reason I can believe God to help me come out of addiction, come out of depression, come out of anxiety, come out of these things that have gripped my soul because Jesus paid the price. It's not mine no more. It don't have to be mine no more if he already. Listen, if you're suffering. Jesus already, he already suffered for you. Now you can begin to come from a position of authority. Hold on, hold on now. Jesus paid for this. He done the time for this. Right? When you know the truth, you can enforce it. When you're ignorant, you take it. 
Amen. The truth is what he done for me on the cross is greater than what I'm going through. Jesus stripes represent a wage for the wages of sin is death. His word, man, I'm telling you, is more of a promise that we believe in salvation and healing. It's a part of the package. It's a package deal. Sometimes we don't dig and discover what else. What? What? This belong to? We take it. We get packages. We get the package of salvation. You know what? I'm just saved. I'm just saved. And there's more to discover. Amen. It's more to discuss. Say, teach me, Lord Jesus. Let's keep moving forward. Let's unpack some more. Who initiated, who initiated this healing process? God or me? Well, first of all, God already initiated when he sent his son. So the hearing of the gospel helps you to understand what's available for you. It's the hearing of preaching that helps you to expect what's available for you. Amen. If I promised you that I was going to give you two hundred dollars after the service, if I was going to if if. <laughs> for instance, example, you know, not for real. If I promised you I was going to give you two hundred dollars after the service, you I was going to give it to you. Could you expect that? Yes, sir. But why would you expect it if I never said it? Many people do God like this. They want something. They are expecting something from God. He, they don't have a word for. All right now. Lord, help me, Jesus, in his place. So why would you expect God to do something he never said? Why would you expect me to be over your house at 6 o'clock when you ain't never told me and asked me? We never made arrangements or nothing. And many people do God like this. They have expectations on God that didn't come from him. Thank you, Lord. It's through your relationship with God where you begin to expect what he said you can have. If he ain't said it, you can't expect it. But if he has said it, that brings hope. And hope that don't disappoint. It don't, it's, not a, it's not a shame. Amen. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. How can you begin to hope for something that God didn't say? How can you stand on a word like Peter did when he walked on the water on the word come? How can you expect you to stand in that water if God, if Jesus never would have said come, Peter could never expect to be stood up on the water. You think Peter just walked out there on that water? (laughs) Jesus said come. That gave him hope. That gave him expectation. That gave him something to look forward to. Well, if Jesus said, come, boom. In order to respond like this or have a relationship with God like this, in order to to have this type of life, you have to have relationship. Because you don't want to come to God and get all his blessings and find out all about these promises. Oh, I can have, I can have. Right? And you heard it from the preacher. You didn't hear it from him. So what is the word? What is the scripture? I got mine. (laughs) That's what you're getting. It's my relationship with the Lord. This message is supposed to inspire you to go home and have a relationship with Jesus yourself so you can begin to expect what he said you can have. If he ain't speaking to you, you don't have a relationship with him. How can you have a relationship with somebody and they don't ever say nothing to you? You always talking to them, always saying something to them. What about him saying something to you? Lord, you got to help me. The Lord got to help me this morning, Mario. We can't talk about healing and not talk about relationship. 
because I hate when people call me, don't even know me, asking me all kind of requesting money Uh-oh. and stuff, and I ain't even said hey to me. Wow. <laughs> okay. Y'all don't like it neither. You know you don't like it. Y'all got the family members. They think you're rich. <laughs> you got the family members think you're rich because you're working all the time. They get locked up. They, you the first person? No, they don't, I'm not the first person. Because I, eh, no. Nope. Hey, love you. God bless you. Put some money on my books. No, no, not this time. They think you're rich. Amen. Jesus want to show us how to respond. And some people, they only call you because they want something. Now, as a pastor, you know, I can take it better than my wife can. You know, I got a lot more patience and love and hang up. Hang up on them. <laughs> but <laughs> Vaughn don't even pick up. What's who number is this? Oh, no. <laughs> she don't even pick up. You know, but being around her helped me to say, you know what? Yeah, that's right. Because as a pastor, I got so much compassion and love, but it don't feel good. It do not feel good to always get calls with somebody asking you for something. That don't feel good. Why do we do God like this? Only when you're going through it, when the car breaks down. What about when everything is good? You know, I, um, Lord Jesus got to help me this morning. What time? We got congregational meeting. Oh, we got, we got plenty of time. What about, I put a post out this morning, last night, early this morning, that said, Lord, you are my healer, right? And somebody texted me and said, you know, Jasper, what's wrong? Is everything okay? (laughs) Yeah, everything is fine. (laughs) But I need Jesus in while everything is fine. Not when things go wrong. I know it's coming with a virus and stuff and how I believe. I know something going to attack my body. So I need Jesus as my healer before I get sick. Amen. I need, we need to be singing about, it. Lord, you're my healer because we're living in a fallen world and chances are you are going to be sick sometime. It's going to try to attach itself to you. So I need a barrier, a protection of anointing and faith already around me before these things come. We were saying no disease can touch my body, no, no, no virus, no bacteria. That every virus and bacteria that touches my body dies instantly. In the name of Jesus. I prayed that prayer with my kids for years and years and years. And the manifestation of a virus is going to knock out all those years of prayer? No way. No way. Amen? Jesus is Lord. Not saying you ain't going to get sick. Not saying ain't nothing going to happen. But my faith is in him to keep me and protect me. And if that ward off a whole bunch of stuff that I don't know about, glory to God. But my faith, I want that stuff to hit my faith first before he even touch me. So put it out there. And we're going to teach you all this stuff. Amen. Amen. Let's keep moving forward. So. This is so good. Lord Jesus, help me. I don't never finish my sermons, y'all. I really don't. I don't never finish them. It'd be stuff left over. Like, dang, Lord. All right. So how do we begin to initiate and begin to accept? All right. I got three ways. It was five. I broke it on down. You know, it's three ways. First one, the word. The Bible says in Psalms 107, 20, he says, he sent his word and healed them. He delivered them from their destruction. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life to those that find them, and health, which is broken down in the Hebrew as medicine, to all their flesh. In this house, in this house, we take the word very seriously. Amen? The word is Prime number one authority in this house. Not man's opinion. Amen. Not my opinion. Not your opinion. The word. Amen. 
not uh, not facts. You know, Jesus didn't tell us to live by facts. <laughs> Why is that? Because facts change. I used to be 220. <laughs> At one point in time, it was a fact that I was 220, 215, you know what I'm talking about, 190 in high school. That was a fact. Was. <laughs> right? Yeah. Ain't, like, ain't, ain't that way no more. No, no, no. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad you see growth. <laughs> Woo! Lord help me, Jesus. Okay. We don't live by facts. We live by the truth. The truth don't change. The truth have existed. The truth have existed from the beginning of time. And it is presently, right now, reigning and will always be. The truth is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The truth don't change. Facts change. And we can't live by facts. Amen? And sometimes facts are even lie to you. But anyway, let's keep moving forward. The word is primary. It's supposed to be primary in your life. The Bible says that the word is like a medicine. If the doctor prescribed you a medicine, right, how would you benefit from the medicine? Huh? By taking it. By intaking it. According to what was prescribed. So what is the prescription here? Proverbs says, my son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my sayings, let them not depart from my eyes, keep them in the midst of thy heart. Amen. One portion says, day and night, go to sleep on it, wake up on it. Amen. And you know, it wouldn't hurt to try to OD. This is the one thing you, (laughs) you're not going to OD on the word. Matter of fact, you know, you might well go ahead and try to make up for all that time you lost. Yeah. Go ahead, just, just, just try to make up for the time you already ain't been in it. You know what I'm saying? Do your best to try to OD on it a little bit. I'll let you know when you're, not taking, when you're taking too much of it, okay? <clears throat> we take the word very seriously. Amen. And how do you intake the word? You take it through your sense gates. Amen. You, uh, there's many ways that we intake the word. We, we, we intake it through worship. We got to hear it. It's got to go in to your ears. So the best way to do that, I think, I believe, is to read the word out loud. Allow yourself to hear what the word is saying. You can also press play. I mean, they, they, this thing that made it so just crazy easy to just throw your headphones on and press play and listen to the word. Right. Amen. So um, you got to get it in you. The Holy Spirit is going to bring back those things that he has taught you. But he can't bring it back if you don't put it in. If his word got healing within it, Jesus said, my words are uh, spirit and they are life. Amen. And so the word has life in it. The word has the word is medicine to all our flesh. So we have to take it in. We have to speak it. We have to hear it. The Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So our sense gates, we must see it, listen to it, speak it, be around people who quoting it, all, who are believing God for something. When, you, when you're around somebody and they really believe it, that word going to come out of them. Should buy a strike some hill. I'm trusting him today. Amen. You will hear the word of the Lord come out of people. So you want to surround yourself around people and fellowship with people who are in the same vein with you. Amen. Number two, the Bible says it's Mark chapter 16, verse 18. They shall take up serpents and they shall drink deadly things and it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The doctrine of laying hands, James 5, 14 says, and if any man sick among you, let them call the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Anointed means also to rub. 
All right. So you have to there is a um, the doctrine of impartation is uh, one that we need to discover is another thing that's a part of the package. But impartation is you can transfer or someone can transfer God's anointing or God's power through touching. This is a basic doctrine of Christ, Hebrew says, the laying on of hands. How many of y'all got upset through someone touching you? How many of y'all have ever been violated? Somebody touched you without your permission. It produces, the enemy uses it, and this, this is when molestation and all that stuff can really take negative effects on you. The enemy can impart devils to you and impart, he, because that, why do you think he touched you? Guess where he got it from? He got it from God. This is why we touch. This is why I let that woman with God right there come up and I say, baby, touch their chest. If I want a female, I'm like, come on, baby, we got to get them. And we touch. We feel the heat. That power come. The heat. People be burning up. We be burning up, too. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is transferred through the obedience. That's why we touch. It's a, doc, it's a basic, basic doctrine of Christ. This is another way you can receive healing. Amen. Amen. The third, and by far not the, you know, last, but I believe the Holy Spirit is the cheat code. The Holy Spirit is the cheat code to the power of God. The Holy Spirit really been dealing with my heart, man, the last couple of months. And he loves his people so much. And his power been coming on me a whole lot more. Like, like I told my wife last night, I was like, something's happening to me. Jesus is changing me. Something is going on. I see myself doing things, moving in the midst of the people. The Holy Spirit using me to touch and help. So I spend time with him. And I say, Lord, I pray that if somebody get around me, that they feel you. Amen. That whoever I touch, Thank you, Thank you. your presence come on them, Lord. I don't want to feel God by myself. One of my gifts that Nate, we, we were taking a spiritual gifts test. One of them is an activator, a jump starter. It's an activator. That means I can help you get started and run the race. Amen. I mean, that's how I got started. You know, I was, the man laid his hands on my head and I said, Jesus, Jesus, teach me, Jesus. And power came on me. And I've been different ever since. Amen. Ever since that day. <sighs> ever since that day. I believe it's one aspect of God that we're missing. And I said, Lord, anything I need to do for your people to experience your power how I need to lay down my life, I do it. Because I don't want to be, it's not fun, man. When I was in the world, I ain't like smoking by myself. Or drinking by myself. I had a smoking buddy and drinking buddy. Actually, we had a house that we all congregated around. I went over there. Because I know what they was going to be doing. Yeah. Right? Amen. And you're here because you know what we're going to be doing. Amen. Now I congregate around the spirit. Amen. I look to get my fix from the spirit of God. Amen. And not from nothing in this world. It's his spirit that you need. Amen. You need his spirit. You need his power. You need something greater than what you, what's anything this world has to offer. Amen. So, 
Come on, uh, Mario. So what I want to do is, I want to give you some tips. How to prepare to receive. Ooh, God, help me. God's presence, man. I've been telling y'all, God, boy, I'm telling you. Woo! His presence. Do y'all feel, y'all be feeling that? Oh, okay, it be shooting out. Oh, praise God. Because I be thinking, I'm like, man, I hope somebody else feel this. I hope somebody else feel this stuff. All these goop bumps and stuff. Amen. But let me give you some tips. Before you come into a, a prophetic atmosphere, I want to build your expectation. You know, I told my wife, every, before every service, I said, man, Jesus is going to change me today. Amen. But you the pastor, I still need Jesus. I need him more than you. I know it might not make sense, but I do need him more than, more than you. All that the devil try to throw, you really have to be sold out. I'm telling you, man. You can't play with this thing. So I want to build you some expectations. Start saying what you desire for the Lord to do before you enter into the atmosphere. Instead of just, I got to go to church today, the Lord going, I'm getting touched today. Man, I'm going to leave with joy today. Man, I'm going to a house, man, I'm going to leave with joy. And you might not feel like None of that is going to happen. But Jesus never told us to walk by a feeling. He told us to walk by faith. For those who walk by faith, coming to church tired is normal. For those who walk by faith, looking at the rain and saying, man, and still going. It's normal. For those of us who walk by faith, don't let nothing stop us from entering into where God has called us to enter into. While you are in the atmosphere, there are some things that you can begin to believe. Amen? You, can, you begin to believe for your healing. You can begin to believe that God rests on you and stay on you. Where you can sense this in your car. Me and Nate was on, we be talking on Mondays, right, about the service and the thing, next steps. Every Monday, me and him get on the phone. And we had mentioned a moment in the service. And the presence of God came back on the phone. I'm like, oh, God, man, man, that was a powerful time. <laughs> it was when the time we blessed uh, Pastor Angela with, uh, because she was been serving. And we just mentioned it on the phone, and I experienced God right all over again. In these services, sometimes it's not, if I just think about the service, I'll feel the anointing come on me again. So while you're in God's presence, pull on the presence in a way, however that is in your faith, in a way that it, that'll help you outside the service, because that's what it's for. While you're listening to the word, here are some expectations I want to get, begin to you, help you with. And you might already do this. So I am just want to lay ground rules, though. While you're listening to the word, be pulling on the Lord on the inside, saying, Lord, speak to me. Give me the answer for my life. Lord, I'm tired of this, 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 and this. Lord, I know you didn't, you don't want me doing this, 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 and this. Keep pulling. Instead of getting, the enemy wants, wants you to get offended at the word. And it's not, my, it's not my problem. I'm just being used by him. I don't know your business. I might do, but I'm not trying to preach about your business. So just receive. Say, Lord, teach me what he's talking about. Teach me, Lord. So even in this message, some of y'all suffering in your body something that you know Jesus died for. It's the opposite of what I've been saying. And you've been believing to the best of your ability. 
I want to admonish you and encourage you. To ask the Holy Spirit, is there anything more that I need to learn? Is there anything that I'm missing? And before coming to the altar, this done happened so many times. You can believe God before you come up here. Not just that my prayer would make you whole. The Bible says the woman that was with the issue of blood, she had an issue of blood 15 years, and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. She was made whole in that same hour. And Jesus said, instantly, she said, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Sometimes I'm just a vessel. People come up and they pull this power out of me. It has nothing to do with me. But it has everything to do with the expectation. I heard many people say, I'm going up there to get healed. I'm going up there to get free. I'm going up there to get, the Holy Spirit is going to touch me when I go up there. I will be healed when I go up there and they pray for me. And so you add to your faith that expectation, which has nothing to do with me. And many people don't receive because they're not expecting anything. Amen. The Lord wants to put in you an expectation and a hope. He don't want to disappoint you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Oh God. Worship him. Lord, he been so good.
listen up real quick. We're going to get in prayer circles. Anyone sick and got pain in the